Welcome everyone to the High Adventure Science, Will There Be Enough Fresh Water? You can find this under Earth Science Resources in learn.concord.org. We're going to be working on activity four today. So click on activity four, groundwater movement. Today, as part of groundwater movement, we're going to learn how porosity and permeability of different sediments, that's soil, gravel, rocks, affect the way water flows through Earth's layers. We're going to use internet interactive computational models to explore the underground flow and deposition of water and determine the best places to access water in a sustainable manner. So basically, we're going to learn what an aquifer looks like underground and where we should drill wells in order to have a sustainable, continuous flow of water. So let's start here. A focus on groundwater. If you dig into the ground, you'll find many different layers of sediment and rock. You can see here in the diagram, there's different colors of brown here with different patterns on it that represents different layers. This drawing shows five layers of sediments and rock. Each different layer has a different ability to store water and to have water move through it. Why do you think the water moves differently through the various rocks and sediment? What is the difference between rocks and sediment? You can type your answers here. I'll give you a few clues. The particles that make up aquifer that the water fits between are different sizes. This size of large marbles could represent rocks. And you can see that there are pretty large spaces between these rocks. The smaller marbles have smaller spaces between them. We'll fill this up with water later so you can see better. And this is gravel, it's just aquarium gravel, but this represents smaller particles. And you can see that the sizes between the particles are smaller um, in this particular particle size. We could go down to sand and look at the particles in sand, and then we could go down to very, very tiny particles in soil as well and think about uh, how that might slow water down as it passes through and how different uh, sediment sizes have different abilities to hold water, to store water because of the size of those holes between them. So things you might want to consider in your answer is the size of the particles. And how fast the water can move between the particles. This is not the answer, but it's the beginning of an answer. Let's go to the next page. If you want to move from page to page, just click the numbers here. Now we get to think about how does water move through sediments and rocks. The model shows different rocks and sediments. Explore how water moves through each of them. Click the play button to start the model. Watch closely to see how easily water flows through each type of sediment. So let's do this. Let's hit the play button. And this is simulating rain. Each one of these different colors here is simulating a different type of sediment that's in an aquifer or in uh, a place that holds groundwater. You can see that the speed at which rain uh, or any water percolates through or infiltrates these different sediments is different depending on what they are and what the particle size is, and what the uh, sizes, spaces between the particles are. So let's pause it here and just look here. It doesn't look like any water is passing through this particular kind of sediment. This has a little bit of water going through it. This has water going through it. It looks like um, there might be different speeds here if we um, 
start the model over and look carefully, we can see kind of where rain hits the bottom first. You can see here in the pink, the water goes through the fastest. Uh, this brown might be the second fastest. I'll let you decide the other three. So we're going to take a snapshot of the model to show how water moved differently through different rock and sediment types. Label the snapshot to show which sediment rock is most permeable to water, that's the easiest flow, and which sediment or rock is least permeable to water that has the most difficult flow or the slowest flow. Let's take a snapshot and I'll show you how to label it. It takes a moment to take a snapshot. And here we are, we have some drawing tools here. There's the pen. Let's go here to choose a pen color. I'll choose yellow because it'll show up really well. And then we can choose a line thickness here and we can draw that this is fast and this is slow. Let's say this is fastest and this is faster. And this is slower or slowest maybe and this is slower or you can label them like one is the fastest five is the slowest whatever you want to do whatever makes sense to you when we're done you just hit done and you can see that your snapshot and your writing shows up right here and that'll show up as part of your answer when you print this as a PDF to hand it in. Porosity and permeability. Why do different sediment or rock types interact with water differently? Let's take a look at the particles that make up each type of sediment or rock. Some sediments and rocks are very porous. They have lots of spaces for water and others have very little space for water. They're non-porous. Some sediments and rocks are very permeable. They allow water to flow through very quickly. And the others are less permeable, allowing virtually no water to pass through. If we think about glass, glass isn't permeable. You can fill a glass with water and drink out of it and the water doesn't leak out of your glass. Compare porosity and permeability of gravel, sand, silt and clay by looking at the picture. The porosity of the materials is represented by a blue bar. The longer the bar, the more porous the material. The permeability is given as a measure of how quickly the water will flow through one meter of the material in time per meter. So let's go check this out. Gravel, the porosity seems kind of pretty good here. There's lots of space between each of the particles and the permeability is really fast, 15 minutes to go through a meter. Porosity looks about the same in sand, but the permeability is three hours. That's different than gravel. Silt, the permeability is four months. That's really different than three hours. The porosity is a little bit more here. The porosity of clay is really great here, but the permeability is 100 years to go through a meter. So which property is the most different? The porosity represented by these blue bars here or the permeability? This goes from 15 minutes all the way up to 100 years. These bars are different sizes, but not that different. So I'll let you think about question three. Question four, if a sediment or rock is very porous, is it also very permeable? Well, 
It looks like clay is really porous, but it's not very permeable. Sand is pretty porous and it's very permeable, so they might not be connected. Let's explain our answer using some of the data here. Gravel is medium, let's call it medium porosity, and very permeable. Uh, let's just say 15 minutes per meter. So we have, I always like to put some numbers if I have them. We don't have them for porosity, but let's use them for permeability. Clay here has a, a good porosity, a high porosity, but a very low permeability. It takes a very long time to get through clay, 100 years. So clay has a high porosity, but a low permeability. So your next sentence should here be uh, why you think they're connected or not connected. Connect porosity, the, how, the ability to hold water the size of the holes, with permeability, the, the, how fast the water runs through. Is it connected or not connected? Explain what you think here in question five. When you're done, we'll go to page four. Bedrock. If you dig deep enough into the ground, you'll eventually hit bedrock. The first picture here, picture A, shows a close-up view of bedrock. The, section, the second picture, B, shows the bedrock con context of the water model. So we have some gravel, some sand, some silt, and the bedrocks at the bottom. So let's take a, a look at a piece of rock here. This is a piece of granite. And if you think about it, granite is used to make countertops. Um, the porosity here isn't all that great. If you spill water on granite, it's pretty much just going to sit there, um, at least in my lifetime, uh, or the lifetime of cleaning up your kitchen. And if you think about uh, the permeability, Often this is bedrock, granite is, can be bedrock. And would you make a countertop out of something that was highly permeable, that had lots of holes in it that water trained through very quickly? Or would you want something for your countertop that water would just sit there until you wiped it up? So, what does it mean to say a rock is porous? Well, if you think about the word pores, they're little holes, like you have pores in your skin. Some people are very worried about the pores in their nose um, because they show uh, to other people. So to say that the rock is porous means it has holes. What does it mean to say a rock is permeable? Um, permeable is how fast water runs through a substance. So this gravel, it's aquarium gravel, you want it to be pretty permeable. Um, water will run through it very quickly. So you can think of your own answers for porosity and permeability. Remember, pores or porous is has, having lots of little holes. Permeable is ability to pass through. A door is permeable. Your wall is not. According to the pictures, what is the likely porosity and permeability of bedrock? Well, let's think about the granite countertop. Does it have a lot of little holes? Will this countertop soak up water or will the water just sit there most countertops if you spill water on them the water is just going to sit there it's not going to get soaked up like a sponge and 
if you let the water sit there too long, is it going to run right through this piece of rock or is it just going to sit there forever? How certain are you about your claim based on your explanation? Well, remember when we do claims, we do claim evidence reasoning. And then we explain how certain we are about our claim. And that certainty depends on how much data we have, how recent that data is, the source of the data, um, and perhaps if the data has any bias, we want to think about that. So I'm going to talk about granite countertops, since granite is one form of bedrock. Granite does not soak up water or let water pass through. Otherwise, people would not use it as a countertop in their kitchens. You can submit your answer here and see Hasbot kind of grades your answer. Hasbot is an AI system that looks at how well you're supporting your claim. It says, my explanation needs more details. Can we provide specific evidence from picture A about the sizes and spaces between particles in the bedrock? Can you provide specific evidence from picture B about how water moves around bedrock? How does bedrock's porosity and permeability explain water flow? You may revise your answer and resubmit, or you can move on to the next page. Well, let's go look at the model a little bit more. It looks like water here is sitting on top of the bedrock. We could mention that as more evidence. We could also look harder at picture A. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of uh, room for water to sit in the bedrock. And since there are very few holes, it doesn't look like water is going to pass through. That's also backed up here in our picture. So let's add some evidence. In picture A, it appears there are very few pores, which would make the permeability very low. Um, low permeability is supported by water sitting on top of the bedrock in picture B. Let's resubmit here and see if we get a better rating. Ooh, we got a six. All right. So the more evidence we provide, the better we are supporting our claim. I'm going to say I'm pretty certain about this because I have a lot of evidence. So I'm going to say four. Um, I have personal experience with granite. So I know how the porosity and permeability behave. I have also observed the diagrams carefully and they are from a reliable source. 
So I have a couple sources of data. I have a diagram. I have personal experience. I know my source is reliable here. Concord's a very reliable source. So I'm going to submit. And it says, now explain why you are certain or uncertain about your response. I kind of did that. I'm going to move on. You can uh, add more to your response if you'd like. We'll uh, cover the rest of this activity on groundwater in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you soon.